What's up guys, Jay Vincent here, Biofit Personal Training. Just got done with my upper body workout consisting of uh, seven different exercises, hitting all the major muscle groups in the upper body. And um, I've since, you know, been doing a split routine because the volume and uh, the level of inroad associated with a full body routine has become far too fatiguing for me to recover from effectively. So upper body, a couple days rest, lower body. Now with this workout, I performed only one set to momentary muscular failure, meaning in good form, I took the set to the point where I could not complete the positive phase or the concentric phase of the repetition in good form. The way I like to do this is I like to approach the point where you're reaching muscular failure and when you cannot finish the repetition in good form, maintaining proper body position, continue to contract for another three to six seconds and then slowly lower the weight. I did this for each one of my seven exercises for the upper body. And at face value, this may seem not, this may seem like a low volume of exercise or not enough exercise to stimulate the desired result, which is improvements in muscular strength and size. Now let me explain something to you, because at face value, hit or high intensity training principles, which generally advocate for one set to muscle failure, only a handful of exercises, and uh, more recovery or rest days in between workouts than what is traditionally accepted in the fitness industry. Now at face value, this could seem like a complete scam, but I'm going to explain, and hopefully you'll be able to understand why it isn't. First of all, High intensity training principles are rooted in peer reviewed scientific literature. Well performed and controlled exercise science literature. The main problem that people have with accepting one set to failure is because they are comparing it to a poorly done exercise set which most people are guilty of. A traditional exercise set uses rapid movements, a lot of momentum, and relatively low time under tension. A traditional exercise set may only last a set of 10 repetitions, 10 to maybe 15 seconds of time under load or time under tension. Each one of my one sets to failure generally lasts about 60 to 90 seconds. So if you look at the amount of time the muscle is under load using energy and creating uh, systemic and localized damage, my one set to failure has about two to three times more time under load than one set or actually all three sets of a traditional exercise set. So as I've explained in the past, high intensity training approach simply condenses the workout into a more efficient approach. So rather than do a 10 to 15 second of poorly performed, rep performed repetitions, a set of 10, maybe three, or a set of 10 repetitions, maybe three sets of that, five sets of that, who knows what people are doing these days. We combine the time under load into one extended set. Why? Because it's more efficient. There is no good reason, first of all, to move quickly during an exercise. There is literally no good reason to move quickly during an exercise unless you're goal is to make it more dangerous or less effective. So by combining everything into one prolonged set, we're making it more efficient, we're making it safer, and with the continuous
continuous muscular loading without taking pointless breaks in between sets, we're making it more effective because you're going to be able to generate in a more aggressive and deeper level of inroad. So when people look at the one set to failure approach, they say that can't possibly work. Well, no, not the way you perform a set. But if you perform an exercise set properly using high intensity training principles, which is a slow repetition cadence, reduction or almost elimination of momentum, and taking the set to the point where absolutely no further movement is possible, then that one set becomes extremely effective. Now, I encourage you to try training this way. Why? Well, why wouldn't you choose an exercise protocol which saves you time? If you you do not time is the most valuable thing you have. For one reason or another that I cannot wrap my head around, people in Western culture specifically will do anything to save time in almost every other category besides exercise. People almost deliberately try to waste time during exercise, yet people will park closest to the grocery store entrance, people will speed, people will do everything possible to save a few minutes but not apply that same logic to exercise so even if the results from high intensity training were exactly the same as your traditional high volume approach which isn't actually high volume it would behoove you to use this protocol for the sake of saving hours a week of your time which can be applied to things that are more the second reason why you should adopt a high intensity training approach is because it is safer. Slow repetition cadence reduces peak forces. High peak forces can, and most of the times do, result in failure of connective tissues, joints and ligaments, which lead to injury. So say you took the traditional high volume approach or the tr traditional stupid power lifting, bodybuilding bullshit approach and you saw substantial gains within three to six months using these fast repetition cadences which generate high peak forces. Month six, you hurt your rotator cuff or your pec. Now you're out for six to eight months. So all that time spent generating and improving your physical capacity gone like that waste of time so even if a high intensity training protocol got you your results more slowly but almost eliminated the chance of injury it would be very wise to choose that safer approach so that way you keep the improvements in physical capacity that you spent months working towards Point three, third reason why you should use a high intensity training approach is generally it's more effective. Why? Because one of the principles advocates training to muscle failure. Most people do not train to muscular failure, which means they are not getting the deepest and most effective stimulus for, for making improvements in their functional ability. Simply training to muscle failure in most cases or, or um, starting to train to failure if you have it in the past will generate improvements and gains that you did not previously see because you are actually providing a significant stimulus to your body to improve and adapt. So for these three reasons, if you're not using a high intensity training approach, you are approaching exercise wrong. You're approaching it in a less effective, less efficient, and less safe way. And there is no good reason for you not to adopt.
adopt a high intensity training approach to exercise. Now, if you wanna learn how to implement these principles properly into your workout, feel free to email me at biofitny at gmail.com. I will put my email in the uh, description below and schedule a Skype consultation with me and we will go over your exercise history. We'll come up with a workout for you based on your equipment and based on where you are in your particular fitness journey and get the most out of your genetics and develop the best physique that you are capable of. We can work together to do this. Also, if you would like to learn this information by yourself, sign up for my course. I'll also put that link in the description box below. You can go through the course and learn the ins and outs of high intensity training principles, exercise science, application, nutrition, everything. You can go on and on your own and do it that way too. Adopting a more efficient, effective, and safe workout protocol can, and in many cases, will be life-changing for you in terms of the improvements in your physique and the amount of time you'll save doing it. Please like and subscribe to this channel for more exercise science, evidence-based, and research-based exercise advice. Hit the bell notification icon to learn the truth about fitness and exercise in the best way to train.